Hey everybody. Fun little afternoon. Can't say a day because I've only been working on it for a few hours. Temperature is 59, 58 degrees. Humidity is 38%. Well, I got this thing covered in aluminum. It is completely covered. My wife put in the first screw on that end and she put on the last screw on this end tonight. No more speed nuts. And until, well, <laughs> I was about to say no more speed nuts and no more sheet metal screws. That is until I install the glazing, which uh, weather stripping and glazing panels, you know, they're gonna be easy as pie to cut out. Just throw me down a piece of cardboard up to those screws. And there she is. What I'm doing right now is I'm back to a strange land that I have not visited in several months called the Dual Flight Engineer Station. What I've done today is permanently mount her on the back end. Got this stuff opened up so you can see what's going on here. been kind of my whole goal is to get the canopy sloped to where the measurements are correct and to be able to fit the flight engineer station in there at its maximum height and still clear everything so let's go in there and look at what I'm talking about oh. she was sitting pretty unlevel there for quite some time Solve that by placing these two by fours here for her legs. Of course, I don't have anything to mount it to until the flight deck floor is installed, which we'll talk about here in a second. Just a quick little reminder. I've had a lot of questions about this uh, FE station recently. This is a real B36. Actually, it's an RB36 H panel. This is the only real B36 part in the back of the entire airplane. Like I said, this was a four engine and I modified it for uh, six engines. Everything else is completely scratch built. I could show you around a little bit here. These panels pop right off here. There's just a whole world down there. There's a big silver box that mounts down there. And this is the channel for the turbo booster select. There's a there's pulleys that run down here, and then that takes it up to the um, the same one that's mounted on the pilot's console. There's, there's so much work that I could do up under here. That's pretty dang close to the, the way the real one looks. I mean, it's, it's off by a, an inch or two here and there, but... I think that this wall should have been a little bit higher, but I don't know because I can't see it. But when you look up under the real thing, that's that's pretty much what you see. And there's a big six engine engine synchronizer in your way, which I'm gonna build that. That might be a little thing. I'm gonna cut back my hours a little bit. I gotta start making a little bit of money. I Over the holidays I had I sold some pretty big items, which enabled me to work on this thing for three months straight, seven days a week. Uh, I'm also looking forward to a little bit of a break. I'm waking up in the middle of the night and seeing sheet metal screws in my dreams. So, ain't gonna hurt anything. That's pretty complex, isn't it? I'll take this thing apart a little bit and show you what's here for all the new people who haven't seen it. This, just like the original, this pops off here, if I can do it one-handed. There you go. That pops off and that's how you can access your wires for your circuit breakers. There's, I think, 72 circuit breakers that line this table here. <laughs> I'll be lucky if I can even find the circuit breakers. But that's what they do. There's so many circuit breakers. Every one of these holes that has three is a circuit breaker. So 
all of these, 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 these, and then all of these, all of those. And there's quite a bit on this panel too. I don't know how many circuit breakers are. I think it's either there, there's either 200 press to test lamps or 200 circuit breakers. I'm gonna completely do this panel out of aluminum. Um, it's damaged, plus it's gonna be my wall hanger. Um, I have all of the, uh, the things that when you tighten up the screw, it squeezes the two inch gauge. So pretty much in one day, I'll be able to copy this and get all those installed. And inside I've got, God, 60, 75% of all the engine. I'm sorry, all the gauges that I need. And uh, everything else is, well, <laughs> everything else is these press the test lamps. Every one of these holes, um, the smaller holes are toggle switches and the big ones are press the test lamps. Um, for people who know what these are on eBay, minimum 15 bucks a pop. So use your imagination on my future expenses. These are, is it these? Yeah, these are some crazy three-way switches. They're actually get one, two, three, and those things are, those things are outrageously priced. And of course, up under here is the basket. I got the switches that go right there for the um, the cutoffs on the uh, the throttle quadrants. Can't remember why there's four. Oh, I think it does it mount one, two, three, four, five, six. No, there's a reason. Oh, these are for the alternator shutoffs. That's what these are. The four engines that have the alternator. The four inbound engines have the alternators. Big old three-phase, 330-volt AC alternators. And the rest of it, this is the fuel control panel. This is the, the main flight engineer's panel. And this is like the auxiliary flight engineer's panel. And then this is like another panel. And then this is the flight engineer's fuel control panel. So all of this here controls the fuel. And then I believe this and this is your prop synchronization, your prop reversal and stuff like that. But it's pretty dang crazy. Flight deck floor is coming. It uh, First thing I need to do is get down and order a sheet of, uh, I'm gonna do, I don't know what gauge it is, but it's bigger than the 16th, but it's not quite 1 8th of an inch. So what, 3 16th? Yeah, 3 16th inch. And I need them cut in 10 foot sections or whatever I need. And I'm gonna redo all those because it's not nearly strong enough. And they're gonna run back to here. And then about right there, and it curves in, curves in again, and that's where that guy goes, and then it goes like straight, something like this. And all of this, depending on how much detail I put in there, it's got this big fairing that, that angles down with that right there. And I believe that is either the turbocharger junction box or the prop synchronization junction box. I don't know, and I'll probably never find a real one, so that's, that's the best deal we're gonna get right there. I don't know how much you can see going up there, but this thing's, it's pretty close to the, uh, pretty close to the original, if not exact in some areas. And then over here, these are real B36 uh, fuse holders. Uh, there's going to be a, a box with a with a uh, indicator light and a toggle switch here and this i believe is like the main power switch to the flight engineer station i think these are these are his main three phase to 28 volt or whatever that's the main flight engineer station junction box and that's going to be covered over by a piece of a removable piece of plexiglass and then this there's going to be these guys here 
can't remember what they're called. It's been such a long time since I've worked with them. They basically just go every four or so inches all the way around. It's going to be a piece of uh, olive drab, silky looking material that covers that. And it's got like big warning placards and everything on it. That's going to be pretty cool. I might get that up there relatively soon just to complete the look. But at the same time, I, I like the, the zinc chromate and the uh, being able to see this beam and the uh, stuff. I said it once, I'll say it again because it's, it's really, it's really cool, but it's not cool. The, uh, when they vandalized the interior of, uh, 52287, the last B36 built, they, uh, they destroyed this entire panel, but in doing so that damaged in those old pictures from the seventies allowed me to see exactly what was going on here. And there's no other way unless somebody would be willing to let me dissect their B36, which they're not going to, I wouldn't have been able to see. So, you know, sometimes there's good that comes out of the bad. A lot of this was made possible by the vandalism done to 2827 when it was on display in Fort Worth. Those pictures that somebody took one day back in the 70s just really helped me. But we're going to get that flight deck floor in here. Get those big beams cut and get them, uh, make them into I beams with the big channel I'm going to get. And uh, it's pretty much going to be uh, corrugated aluminum. I'm going to have to make the corrugation myself and uh, figure out these flight controls that mount about right here. You're going to have your yoke, and they're going to be connected through a big tube. Lots of fancy welding to make them look like they're cast mag. And get the early model yokes built the columns and the uh, the big rudder synchronizers that live up under there or those are the those aren't the rudder synchronizers what are those there's an aileron synchronizers something it's what makes the control columns go back and forth they link to that and that's what makes them both uh, simultaneously go forwards and backwards so i used to have little name tags up there to tell me what that stuff did but We'll have the real things in there. That's all going to be welded steel. It's going to look really nice when it's done. Sooner than later, hopefully. Yeah, I'll, well, I got to think, uh, I got a donation, hundred bucks, uh, four or five days ago. Uh, thank you very, very much for that. That goes a long way. Uh, welcome to all my subscribers and everybody just checking in. If you're really amazed by my build and you want to help, all you got to do is watch my videos, click on my videos, and share people. Tell people about this guy and what he's doing. That's all it takes. I'll see you all next time.